So, what are we looking at here? We're looking at two CBR 250R wheels. Uh, the year is, uh, I think they're off of 12, but the, I think they made them from 11 to 2013. So, we're gonna fit these on a CRF 250L. Um, here's the wheels. I got some other stuff over here. We're gonna go over all the parts and all the stuff that you need. Everything you're gonna need to put it on the bike. Couple disclaimers though. Um, one, you do all this at your own risk, um, obviously. Uh, two, um, my bike is a 2016. So that being said, if you have a 17 plus, you may have to do something different with the front wheel. Uh, I've been told that I think the axle's a little bit thicker, or there's something with the wheel bearings. I don't know, we're not gonna get into it, but basically the front wheel is what would be a problem on the 17 pluses. But for this bike and my bike, we should be all right. We're gonna start the video out with basically everything that you'll need, like a parts list. <clears throat> Cause the idea is, is if you can get all this stuff it should just be basically a kit to put on and obviously there is some machining that is going to have to happen um, i had a machine shop do my work i've been told and i've read that you can do some of this work with a grinder and hacksaws and that type of stuff but i think that going with the machine shop is a better better bet and everyone will have a different experience with the machine shop so i can't make any promises there but so let's get started with the parts list first you're gonna need the rims. You need the front rim and the rear rim. And normally when you're buying them, just pay attention to when you're buying them, like what comes with them. Uh, sometimes you'll get them with a brake rotor, sometimes they'll come with um, a tire or, you know, whatever. Like you just pay attention to what you're getting. Um, I just bought bare rims. Uh, I think my rear wheel had uh, the, uh, the brake rotor already mounted on it, but the front wheel was completely bare, didn't have anything on it and they already have the wheel bearings in them. And I'm gonna go with the wheel bearings that are in them. So after you get the wheels, you're gonna wanna get tires for the wheels, that's obvious. Uh, I went with IRC Road Winners, 130, 70, 17's in the back, and the 110, 70, 17's in the front. <clears throat> uh, I've been told you can put the 140 on, uh, but I just opted to do the 130 because that's what most of the write-ups that I had read <clears throat> said to use or what they had gone with. So I just went with what they had. So you got the rims, you got the tires. Um, the rear wheel, you have to get a hub for it. Um, this is what the hub looks like and it will come with a sprocket on it most likely. Uh, this is the factory sprocket. It'll probably come with that on it. But I opted to uh, up the teeth, so I wanted to put a different sprocket on. So this is the new sprocket, obviously. You're going to need the cush bushings for the wheel for that as well. I just bought them used with, you know, they're nothing special here. You could get new ones if you wanted. I just got used ones. Uh, brakes. You need both brake rotors. Um, this one's the rear. That was the one that came on the wheel. And here's the fasteners for it. I did hardware for it. And then the front one, it has the screws in it as well. Fasteners are in there, you can see them. Yep, fasteners. So brake rotors, you need brake rotors for both wheels and the brake rotors are just factory CBR, same year. All this stuff is for a CBR. So when you get the hub, it's for a CBR. When you get the push, that's all for a CBR. CBR, all this stuff is for the CBR. I bought a new chain. This isn't a mandatory thing. Um, if you want to go with a new chain, just get a new chain. That's a Japanese chain. It's nothing like name brand, nothing fancy. It's just an O-ring chain, RK. I've never even heard of these guys, but it's, it's Japanese, so I'm going to go with it. Um, this is the brake uh, adapter piece, or it's not really an adapter. It's a bracket so that you can use the bigger brake disc, the, the bigger front brake disc on the front. Uh, it's a Honda factory part. It's for the uh, CB, uh, CRF250M in Taiwan or in J Japan I'm not exactly sure but I know that in uh, in those countries I'm pretty sure there was there was a there was a supermoto version of the bike released and it has this bracket on it so you can buy it 
OEM. From I got it from Biker Bits. There is a link online. If you look up the uh, the thread on Thumper Talk where they're talking about this conversion, you can find this link on there, and that's exactly where I got this part from Biker Bits. All right, so lastly, we'll talk about spacers. Spacers now. Here we go. Um, the start you're going to want to buy a factory set of CBR 250R spacers. That's what I started with here, factory set of spacers. Um, <clears throat> and then I obviously had them machined down. So I want to make sure we go over the parts real quick. So you're going to want to get the factory spacers and then we'll talk about the machining. So we got the wheels, we got the tires, we got the brakes, we got the hub and it's bushing. We got the bracket for the brake. Now the, and the chain and the chain, this is kind of like an extra thing. You don't, I don't, you may do your chain, you may not. Now this stuff right here is kind of like your, like you may not, you don't have to buy this to literally do the, the swap. This is just extra that I just got because I'm doing this and I'm gonna do this as well. So we'll start with, this is the kickstand off the same bike that I was talking about this, the Supermoto version of the bike. This is the kickstand for that bike and you can get it from the same website. And here, and I'll do this for you guys for the videos too. If you want, we'll get a good look at the part number. That's the brake, uh, the brake caliper bracket. And that's the kickstand. All right, so the extra stuff. Along with that, I got a speeder, speed, ah, speedometer corrector from DRD, or you know, it's a DRD speedo correct. Tomcock Labs. They make good stuff. I, I have uh, the relay for the blinker, and it was it's awesome. I think it fixed my problem easily. And then obviously Supermoto Fender. That's the obvious thing we can all see here. So Supermoto Fender. Um, the only thing I'm missing right now, which I will have by the time I'm actually doing the build, is a front sprocket. So I opted to do a new rear sprocket, a new front sprocket that's coming, and a new chain. So I will have a new, that's the only thing missing right here. So if you, if you want to get the front sprocket and do the whole setup like I did and get the chain, just factor that into your, you know, how much it's all going to cost. Okay, so let's talk about the machining that needs to happen to the, uh, well just all the machining in general, but we'll start with the wheel. Uh, the wheel is probably by far this is the most important like you want to get this as true and as fair as possible um, this is the brake side this is the brake rotor side and this is the side that i had milled down at a machine shop i had exactly 9.5 millimeters uh milled down off of this and if you look closely let's let's get try to get a better shot of this it has these little like uh, we'll say raised areas and that's basically for a spot for the the rotor to sit in and it kind of keeps it centered And it keeps the brake rotor exactly where it needs to be So they kept those because after they milled down the wheel they realized that those were sticking up way too far So they milled those down the same Distance as you can see so it still has that factory uh, Install it still has a factory install and it still looks factory so after they milled the wheel down, it was obvious that these little counter sinks right here, after you take your wheel apart, or if you already have it apart, you'll notice that there's these little counter sinks in the holes that are like in the screw hole itself, and that's where the barrel of the, the bolt goes in. That had to be uh, milled out as well, or drilled out, I guess you could say, because that, that hole wasn't as deep after they had milled the wheel down. So that had to be milled out the depth, basically what they took off. So everything was the same distance, 9.5 millimeters. And that's all you have to do to the wheel itself. Next bit of machining that I had to deal with, well, well I didn't really have to deal with it, but this is a clearance cut and it's on the hub assembly itself. If we look, this is this part. That's where the, you know, it goes into the wheel with the sprocket and whatnot. There was a lip that sat up right here as you can see this is all flush I'm trying to not shake here i'm sorry i'm trying to get a nice clean shot of this see how that's nice and flush with the uh with the sprocket that's exactly how i wanted it though you don't have to go that far you only have to go as far as the bolt heads as you can see the bolt heads still stick out so no matter what i'm limited to the bolt heads but i just had it go i had them take it all the way down flush just for that look and i thought it looked really good so if you look i'll hold it up on an angle and you'll actually see that the that the, the actual housing now is protruding enough. I'm trying to get a good shot of that. I'm sorry if I'm a little shaky. I'm trying to do this with one hand, but you can see that it protrudes and that's very important, very important. All right, now we'll talk spacers. So the spacers, 
I had them basically modify a set of CBR 250R spacers. Like I was saying before, you need to get a blank set. You can, where, wherever I got the wheels from, which I got them on eBay, you can find the spacers on there as well. You'll be able to get the spacers. So we'll start with the rear, all right? This, you'll notice that this smaller one doesn't have a lip on it like this one does. Um, the factory one, when they come factory, the set that you'll have, that you'll get, will have a lip on both of them. They'll both have a lip. So the idea here is that in the rear, you need to mill this one to 11 millimeters. And this is the sprocket side. This is the side that actually goes in here. And I'll show you what that's going to look like. It only protrudes just enough. You see that? See how it just protrudes just enough to keep the housing off your sway arm. 11 millimeters sprocket side rear and you don't want a lip. Tell them you want, the, you want to take the lip off and you want to use the smaller one that you get. Like when you get the factory rear ones, you're going to have a larger one of these and a smaller one of these. You want to take the smaller one and have a millet down to this with no lip. This one, this is the brake side. You want to have this one just milled down on the edge right here, down to 16 millimeters, and tell them to leave the lip. You want, you want the lip on this one. 11, 16, no lip, lip. All right, front spacers. So, this is when things can get a little bit different in uh, what, what happened here. Okay, so here's my factory one. I have a factory one here, not to confuse everyone here, but here's the one that we're gonna use. This is the brake rotor side. It is a 30 millimeter spacer. And what happened was, is I've been, when, when I was reading about this, I read that if you take the factory one and you end up cutting off some or whatever, whatever they would have to do, they'd have to add to the one to make it 30 millimeters. And then the other one gets cut down to 19 millimeters. So it's 30 and 19. Those are the ones that get used. I don't want to sure you get used. That's the factory one that they didn't use. They ended up making me one they ended up making me a 30 millimeter so my 30 millimeter is just a brand new custom spacer i guess you could say 30 millimeter brake rotor side 19 millimeter on the just normal no, nothing side there's nothing on that side it's just the wheel so hopefully with just the parts list that gives you a really good understanding of the job i mean if you know how to take wheels off and reinstall wheels then really just knowing what you need is half the battle um, all right so this is the uh, the bracket installed. It's kind of hard to see. Uh, here, let me try to get a better angle here. I've kind of made a mess. Like, look, I got all my stuff strewn out about here, but the bracket is right there. You can see it. There it is. Turn it all around. This piece is all the bracket, and it has to go in. Um, what I noticed is on the old bracket. Here's the old one. There's a little peg that comes out from this one, I believe. I believe it's that hole. You'll notice it when you take it apart. That You have to reuse that peg. Um, the, uh, the new bracket doesn't come with it. You have to reuse one of the pegs. And I think it's, it's the peg that goes into this, this hole right here. You have to use a wrench. It's kind of hard to see. But there's a little wrench head up here. And that unscrews from there. And you have to reinstall that into the new one. See, there it is going into the other side. So this is what it looks like all put together. If you, it's kind of hard to notice probably from, you know, when, what it looks like from stock, but I think this piece right here sits more in right here. Like it, it separates this bolt to this bolt. There's a more of a gap here, I've noticed. <clears throat> and that's the difference. So the front one's on now. Uh, oh, sorry about the sun there. Uh, it's on. It wasn't that hard actually to put on. The spacers that, that they lined up perfectly, the wheel is on. The brake is functional. I tested it. Oops, sorry. There's the custom spacer, the 30 millimeter. And there's the other size. I can't even tell you what it is right this minute. <laughs> I think it was 19. 19 millimeter on the other side. Everything's nice and tight. I did have to trim the plastic probably hard for you to tell because I did cut it nice and straight but that piece of plastic it's still kind of close but it's good it won't hit now but that this side's okay this side won't hit this side was already good but keep that in mind that the the I guess that would be the right side of the bike the non brake rotor side of the bike the uh, plastic will have to be trimmed a little bit but all in all it went on nice and easy 
no no problems at all i feel like it was harder to probably install the uh bracket for the brake than it was to actually just mount the wheel so stay tuned and we'll be getting this rear wheel on so this is where i ended yesterday putting the wheels on it was getting dark and i just basically couldn't work anymore i literally got the wheel on and put the bolt through and then I just, I packed up all my tools and I went inside. So this is where I got to and just basically a couple hours of work from what I had off the parts list. You're talking to daddy. I'm talking to my people on YouTube. Oh. Say hi, Catalina. Hi. Hi. Tell everyone to like the video. <laughs> Tell everyone to like the video. You say everyone like the video. Okay. Embarrassed. But here's the clearances. I'll try to get a really good shot here. See if it'll focus up. But you can see you can't get anything in between there. It is just enough for it to fit. And then over here, same thing. There's just enough room. And if you look at the bolt heads, these were the stock bolts. I just made sure everything was countersunk. It's probably really hard to see. But let's like look at, look at one of the bolt heads go in. There's your clearance with them. So, really happy. Really, really, really happy with how it turned out. Um, still haven't got my front sprocket. So as soon as the front sprocket comes in, I'm gonna change the chain out of the front sprocket. That's it, fender, DRD eliminator, and uh, we'll go ahead and put the kick, kick stand on. Alright. I hope you like the video. Try it again. <laughs>